97 teams to go on my road to predict all 131 teams this college football offseason. Now moving on to the Oklahoma State Cowboys, where this is a team that literally was this close, this close to making the college football playoff um, and winning the Big 12 championship. Alas, neither of those things happened last year, but this was still one of the better football teams in the nation in 2021. But in 2022, they're going to break in a new defensive coordinator. They're going to be breaking in a lot of new pieces, some talent leaving this team as well. So my question, can Oklahoma State get back to the Big 12 championship game and possibly this year into the college football playoff? Or is this going to be a year that the Pokes maybe take a step backwards? What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all 131 teams this college football offseason, which means I'm doing your favorite teams. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when that video gets uploaded. And for fans of the Oklahoma State Cowboys, but to all fans in general, you guys are going to know your favorite team a lot more than me. So if you guys feel like I missed something, got something wrong, want to add something, whatever have you, leave it in the comment section down below. I will be happy to read through them. Let's talk about the Pokes in 2022. They are my fourth ranked team in the Big 12 coming in to this upcoming season. And um, last year was phenomenal for this team. 12-2, and 8-2 and two in conference. That does include the Big 12 championship game against Baylor where they missed the end zone by that much. It was a very, very good, very, very close game. And Baylor ended up coming out on top. Couple stats for this team last year offensively. 417 yards per game and 31 points per game, both around the middle of the road in the Big 12 Conference. But when you look at this defense last year, that was the reason why Oklahoma State won as many games as they did last year, especially that rush defense. Under 90 yards per game, fantastic stuff from this Oklahoma State team. 273 yards per game with around 16.8 points per game, two of the best marks in the entire nation. Um, but as I said in my intro, uh, they may not have as good a defense as last year. Not because the talent is not there. And we'll look at that here in a little bit. In fact, you guys can see it on screen now. But uh, defensive coordinator Jim Knowles was stolen by Ohio State to go over help Ryan Day and company improve that defense over at that program. So Oklahoma State's now going to have to pick up the loose pieces and try to find a new defensive coordinator and hope this defense can continue to be as good as it was under Jim Knowles. Derek Mason I, figures to take over. They may have co-defensive coordinators there as well under head coach Mike Gundy. Uh, but now looking at some of the talent that is leaving and coming back to this team. So quarterback Shane Illingworth is gone off of this team, was kind of the backup quarterback. 385 yards, three touchdowns, and one pick last year. So Shane Illingworth gone off the team. You lose leading rusher Jalen Warren. Um, Six or excuse me, 12,000, uh, 1,216 yards. My apologies, 1,216 yards with 11 touchdowns for Warren last year. Uh, was also a pretty good receiver, uh, out of the backfield with 225 yards on 25 catches last year. So, uh, good stuff from Jalen Warren, the former Utah State Aggie, uh, did great things in a cowboy jersey. Uh, LD Brown gone as well. Uh, and thousand yard receiver Tay Martin, 1,046 yards. 10 touchdowns from a season ago, gone off this team. And for as much defensive talent that was on this team last year at Oklahoma State, was nuts. There is so much talent leaving this defensive team. It is insane. Malcolm Rodriguez, leading tackler with 129 of them, gone off the team. Jarek Bernard Converse, transferred over, I believe, to LSU, had 11 passes defended last year. Uh, he's gone. Tanner McAllister followed Jim Knowles over to Ohio State. Christian Holmes, Trey Sterling, Colby Harvell uh, Peel, Devin Harper, Cameron Farrar, um, so many other names gone off of this defense as well. Um, very much lots of talent leaving leaving this team. Uh, the, the, this is definitely a team that's going to have to be picking up the loose pieces on the defensive end and definitely is going to need a lot of help in that secondary position. They need some guys to step up and make some plays. Uh, but hey, you know what? Let's look at some of the talent that they have coming back that figures to maybe try to do that, to try to fill in for some of that talent. So uh, Spencer Sanders is coming back, figures to be that starting quarterback next year, 2,839 yards, 20 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. Um, Spencer Sanders overall, 
a pretty decent quarterback, but he's got to improve his play, right? His interception numbers cut back on that, throwing at a 62% completion percentage, which isn't bad. Maybe you'd like to see that improve a little bit. Uh, but I think in order for this team to take the next step offensively, even after some of the guys they've lost, like Warren and Martin, still a lot of talent left on this team as we're about to see. Spencer Sanders has got to take his game to the next level. Uh, their running back for next year probably figures to end up being uh, Dominic Richardson. Uh, he had 373 yards, four touchdowns last year. And speaking of rushing, Spencer Sanders was actually the second leading rusher on this team last year behind Jalen Warren. 668 yards and six touchdowns for Sanders on the ground as the quarterback last season. Uh, in terms of the wide receiver room uh, for Spencer Sanders, well, you get Brennan Presley coming back, 600, 619 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, Blaine Green, Rashad Owens, a couple guys coming back. And then a really talented freshman uh, by the name of Talon Shetran uh, coming to play for this team as well. And he figures to be a more exciting piece to this offense. Defensively, lots of talent on the defensive line. Trace Ford, Colin Oliver, who had 11 and a half sacks last year. Brock Martin, Tyler Lacey, Brandon Evers. Lots of talent coming into this Oklahoma State team. Linebacker Xavier Benson is a transfer coming over. Uh, Mason Cobb, the linebacker, coming back as well. A couple guys in the defensive back room. Jason Taylor, Jabbar Muhammad, and Corey Black coming back for this team as well. So still some good pieces on the defensive end. You just got to see you guys take that next level and really step up their game for Oklahoma State to have another special year like they did in 2021. And taking a look at the schedule here for Oklahoma State. Um, definitely a fairly interesting schedule. Of course, it's the Big 12. Everyone plays everyone. But the non-conference games are somewhat intriguing. So Central Michigan is a team um, that I'm looking forward to watch. And I think it's a team that can go win the Mid-American Conference in 2022. They're returning Lou Nichols. That fantastic running back was one of the top running backs in the nation last year. And I think that's going to be a fun and interesting game to watch. Arizona State, they lose a lot of talent from last year, and they figure to be in kind of a rebuilding mode. Uh, so Oklahoma State figures to have that one at home. Should be able to win that one. Arkansas Pines Bluff, they're at home as well. Don't see much of a challenge for the Pokes there. Uh, when you get into Big 12 play, road games against Baylor, TCU, Kansas State, Kansas, and Oklahoma. Games at home against Texas Tech, Texas, Iowa State, and West Virginia. So let's go ahead and jump in, do a little more of a deep of a deep dive into the Cowboys' schedule. So for the games, um, again, talked a little bit about their non-conference games. Arizona State's losing a lot of talent. That could be a pretty interesting football team to watch in Arizona State. And again, Central Michigan, I think, is a team that can go ahead and win the MAC next season. I think they got a lot of nice talent. Um, and Central Michigan, remember what happened last time they played Oklahoma State? Yeah. Uh, so watch out for that game. It's a Thursday game. Should be a lot of fun, though. Uh, try to see what these two teams have going on. Uh, in terms of their conference play, these are going to be uh, some interesting games. On the road at Baylor, an immediate rematch to start out Big 12 play of the Big 12 championship game from a season ago. I think that game is going to be a lot of fun to watch. And I also think Baylor um, is going to be another solid team this year. Uh, so I think that's going to be a very, very fun game to watch. Oklahoma's got, Oklahoma State excuse me, has got to go on the road to play that. We'll see what happens on the road at TCU. is not going to be easy. If Texas Tech can get that offense figured out, they're not going to be a pushover. Kansas State's got a lot of nice talent coming in. Kansas has got one of the more improved teams in the country this year. One of the most talented teams for Kansas in a very long time. Iowa State figures to be in a rebuilding mode. Kind of same thing with West Virginia but they're still two tough teams to play, although Oklahoma State gets them both at home. Uh, then they got to go on the road for Bedlam uh, to play on the road against Oklahoma. And at home as well, game I skipped over, game against Texas. And Texas has just made a lot of improvements and has kind of added, at this point, too much to not improve, if that makes any sort of sense. So uh, definitely going to be a very, very interesting uh, schedule for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. I don't do game-by-game -game predictions. I do a percentage-based outlook to help me predict a team's record. So games in red are games that um you're probably not going to win, but hey, it's college football. An upset's going to happen. Games in orange, or, or, or hey, games in red, you're probably not going to win. Games in orange are games you're probably not going to win. But hey, it's college football. An upset's going to happen. Yellow are your 50-50 upset potential games. Games in yellow-green are games you should probably win, but watch out for teams on the other side of the ball. 
and games in green I do have as games that you are good to win. So I said watch out for Central Michigan. I do think that can be a team that can be pretty solid this year, uh, but I think Oklahoma State's got that win there. Again, Arizona State figures to be rebuilding as well. While the game is in yellow-green, see Oklahoma State winning that, as well as Arkansas Pines Bluff, so they sweep non-conference. Getting into conference play here, yeah, there are a lot of interesting games. I mean, you got to go on the road to play TCU Kansas State, uh, the two teams that I did yesterday. If you haven't seen those videos and you are a Big 12 fan, recommend you go check those out if you would like. Uh, but for Oklahoma State going on the road, I think they maybe split those two games. I think they win one. Uh, I think they win one, lose one, and maybe they lose both. Who knows? Uh, but also going on the road to play Baylor, that's going to be a very tough task there as well. I think Baylor still figures to be one of the better teams in the nation coming into this year as well, as does Oklahoma uh, with Brent Venables as that head coach there for Oklahoma. Uh, getting into Texas as well. Look, Texas to me, I think it's just made too many. I think Texas has made too many improvements to not get better, if that makes sense. Texas has just added so much talent, so much just f fantastic players that I don't know that Texas is going to have another five and seven season. That's going to be a very, very good football team. Oklahoma State gets them at home, and we'll see what happens with that game. But all in all, guys, what overall when you look, yes, they're losing a lot on the defensive side of the ball. Their wide receiver group is young, uh, and Dominic Richardson, a fairly young guy there as well. But Spencer Sanders, the experienced guy at the quarterback position, has to be able to take his game to the next level, to take this Oklahoma State to the next level in 2022 and continue to be a top 10 team and compete for a Big 12 title. All in all, I don't see Oklahoma State having a bad season, but it is a step back from where they were last year. I think Oklahoma State's going 9-3. and three in 2022 um this is in my opinion a less talented team especially defensively from last year and um the schedule i think is tougher i think the big 12 is also only getting better as a conference and i think this is going to be a tough road for oklahoma state to navigate but they absolutely have the juice to get back to a big 12 championship game and that record may very well be good enough to do it and i could see this team going for anywhere from seven and five maybe if things don't work out and if the loss on defense is too much and if Spencer Sanders doesn't improve, maybe even degrades in his play from a season ago. I see that as the floor. The ceiling, though, 11-1. and one. This team definitely has the talent, has the coaching, has the will, has whatever in order to get back to that level that they were at last year. But I think it starts out with Spencer Sanders and the wide receiver group. It's a young wide receiver group, going to be led by the junior uh, in Brennan Presley. So Spencer Sanders, it's all on him to try to take that next step. And we'll see how the defense looks uh under a guy not named jim Knowles, but that's my prediction for oklahoma state in 2022 let me know what you guys think i have them going nine and three in 2022 be sure to leave a like comment subscribe anything you can help support the channel and remember to play hard but tailgate harder i'll see all you guys in the next video goodbye